Instead of talking about LeBron James, which I am prone to do, a uh, memo to everybody, he was great. But James Harden scored 33, and years from now, people will say, whoa, what a night for James Harden. James Harden in the fourth quarter, in the biggest game of the year for the Rockets, took three meaningful shots. I could spend the next 10 minutes talking LeBron, but he delivers. Although he doesn't always play great, he is always engaged. How many series, how many possessions, how many big playoff spots does James Harden have to check out before those who cling to him finally acknowledge he's not close to LeBron? He's not, he's not the late Kobe. He's not Kawhi. I mean, Giannis, face of the league, I'm over it. Harden, greatest scorer ever, and Westbrook MVP, whatevs. Once again, Fourth quarter, 82 all, season on the line, take a lead on the Lakers, three meaningful shots for James Harden. Folks, some guys are built for it, some guys are not. LeBron was engaged, assists, points, blocks, leading, yelling, chirping. He never stops talking. LeBron's all over the floor. Harden. You can tell. Gets passive. Yeah, Kawhi checks out occasionally on a Tuesday night in Memphis. But you got to say this for Kawhi Leonard. Spurs, Raptors, and Clippers. When you need him late, nobody like him to get a bucket and get a stop other than LeBron James. The NBA has never been about stats. If it were, Joy and I would talk about Carl Malone all the time. But we talk about LeBron and Magic and Bird And Michael Jordan, it's about moments. It's not about points. It's not about points. And James Harden had 33 last night. Congratulations. But if you watch the games and you watch the fourth quarter and you're waiting for the big star to take over, it's a 50-50 proposition with Harden. I mean, LeBron James, without calling out James Harden, because Rondo has a history, and he's kind of a shot fighter. Rondo's got a history, and he's not close to Harden as a talent anymore, and he's way past his prime, but he's a big game player. LeBron kind of hinting at what we all know to be true this morning about those big moments and how some guys just not built for him. We don't know how many opportunities we're going to get at this level. Some people are built for this moment, and some people are not. And um, and I, and I, I just think that when you've been uh, in the process and you've been building your mind and your body and your soul for the postseason, no matter the circumstances, no matter the environment, um, then you're able to rise. Can you imagine how we would rip LeBron if he only took three meaningful shots in the fourth quarter last night? LeBron is sometimes, and this happens to a lot of people, you become a victim of yourself. His standards are so high that we have, I haven't, but people will rip LeBron for making a brilliant pass to a wide-open shooter in a big spot, for not taking a bad shot. But this morning on Harden, well, he scored 33 points. Crickets. Come on, man, the book's written on Westbrook. It's written on Giannis. It's totally written on Harden. He's a great scorer, and that's kind of it. He's not a great leader. He's not great in big spots consistently. And by the way, I'd vote Hall of Fame. It's not about that. No, he, he get, he's a Hall of Famer. But, I mean, at some point, are we going to acknowledge now, outside of Kawhi, nobody in this league in year 17 is as dependable, as engaged, is the leader, is the force, is the... I mean, LeBron last night is barking and talking and blocking and passing and scoring. Harden's guy, you, you watch him and you're like, is Harden on the floor? It, it, we're, we're, you never said that in the regular season. Once again, last night, you said it in a big spot on Harden in the postseason. But let's go to Rick Buecher, Fox Sports NBA analyst, and uh, joining us via the Coward Global Satellite Network. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny about this. I never banged on Kevin Durant when he made his life easier. He had worked his butt off at Texas, his butt off in high school, his butt off in Oklahoma City. He got tired of playing with Westbrook. He wanted to play with Clay and Steph. Giannis should leave, right? Miami's plugging titles, right? I'm not crazy on this, right? I am praying, Colin. I am praying that Giannis Antetokounmpo 
does not hear a word of what you're saying, or if he <laughs> does, that he dismisses it out of hand. You were talking about I don't even know where to start. First of all, the whole American puritanical approach, take the easy way. Okay, that might apply to Americans, but Giannis Antetokounmpo is not. He had to take a hard route to get here, and taking that hard route brought him to a place that he never dreamed of being. So if we look at everything that he has said and done, there is no question that he's going to stay in Milwaukee. He would have to do a, a complete 180 in order to go someplace else. And this is where I think you're a thousand percent wrong, is that right now, because of KD and LeBron and Kawhi all taking the easy route, there is a crying need, a starvation among basketball fans to have a Dame Lillard who actually is capable of winning a championship. And Giannis Antetokounmpo is that. Dame Lillard is maxing out what he's capable of. Uh, he's still going to need help around him. Giannis simply needs to get better. The issue is not Milwaukee. It's not the market. It's Giannis Antetokounmpo needs to develop his game to the point where he can be that guy that leads a team to a championship. We had this debate, you know, uh, brought up uh, elsewhere about is he a, a Jordan or a Pippen? Well, skill-wise, talent-wise, ability-wise, he's a Scottie Pippen right now. But from those that have coached him that I've spoken to, he has a Jordan mindset. He's not afraid to take the shot with the game on the line. He's not afraid to be a closer. He simply needs to develop the skill set that allows him to do that. But if you look at LeBron James and his championship in Cleveland versus the two that he got in Miami or whatever else he did in Miami, the one in Cleveland is the one that cemented his legacy and in my mind means more than the two that he got in Miami or anything that he would get in LA. Well, we have a difference of opinion. If I if that door opens for me, I just walk through. I, the and I understand because you're an American. Because <laughs> you're an American, Colin, Colin, and you're into commerce. You're into <laughs> transactions. Yes. Giannis is more of a just a from the heart. I'm fortunate. I'm an I'm an immigrant that was that has this NBA team that decided to take a chance on me and made me their superstar, and. The gratitude that he has. I mean, look, Dirk Nowitzki, did he ever go anywhere? No. Pal Gasol, did he ever go anywhere? No, not until Memphis decided, you know what, we're, we're done. We're ready to move on. We'll trade you. Marcus Gasol, never. If you look at international players that have had teams that have said, you're our guy and we will build around you, their gratitude is different than the guys who grew up playing AAU here who are just used to Hey, where are the best players? Where's the best team? That's where I'm going. Yeah. Well, I guess my heart's not big enough. All right. So, Jay, <laughs> if we cared about points, I would spend my whole show talking about Carl Malone. But I talk about Michael and LeBron and Shaq. I talk about titles. Mm -hmm. James Harden, once again, appears somewhat disengaged in the biggest moment of the season for Houston. And I'm just over being told how, you know, he's this, he's the MVP, he's the next this, he's the next that. Three meaningful shots late. LeBron's in year 17. He's blocking shots like a rookie, passing, yeah. yelling, coaching. I, I don't want any more excuses. Harden, to me, looked disengaged at times in the fourth quarter. Is that unfair? It's not unfair, and this is what I struggle with with James, is that trapping him and forcing the ball out of his hands is the easiest way to end his involvement. And if you, if you watch LeBron, if you watch some of the best players when they are double teamed, yes, they give up the ball and then they move without the ball and make hard cuts either to get the ball back or to still shift the defense toward them to create something for somebody else. James approaches it, oh, you're going to double me? Okay, I guess I got to let somebody else do the work and doesn't continue to to tried to exploit the defense and that's my issue now it may be just a fatigue thing he's got to do so much when he's got the ball in his hands 
that he can't do that and play off the ball. But that, to me, is the heart of the issue here and why I, I had the Lakers initially winning this series in five because the Rockets are fairly simple to figure out and to, uh, to, to have that element that is going to diffuse what makes them special. And primarily, it's doubling James Harden because once you get the ball out of his hands, he doesn't do a whole lot of work after that. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I've said I've watched every team multiple times in the bubble. Um, I think there's seven good teams, not special. One that's occasionally special, but briefly the Clippers. Are you bothered at all that they can't put back-to-back great performances together? I mean, it's just been this way the whole entire bubble. They're like a strobe light. Like every once in a while <laughs> they flash and go, "Ooh, boy, that's great. And then it's off again. It's they, they flip the switch, and then they flip it off again, and then they flip it on again. Yes, no, that it, it, uh, it concerns me because talent-wise, if I look at all of the rudiments of that team, they are the team to beat, yes. and they should be decisively. But they are their own worst enemy because they play one game and they prove it, and then they downshift again. And... The endurance, the mental endurance of playing hard and playing hard for 48 minutes and doing it game after game, I've never seen a team that, is, that wins a championship that isn't capable of that. And I've been waiting. Like, during the regular season, okay, I get it. But at some point, you have to turn that switch and you have to stay in that mode. And we still haven't seen it. Some of it, obviously, is that Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell were late getting to the bubble for a variety of reasons. They haven't looked nearly the same. But I'm just not seeing the necessary intensity quarter by quarter, game by game. And yes, those, that, it's a bad habit. Uh, developing the mental toughness to stay stuck in when things get hard, no matter what, is is a muscle that you develop and the clippers have not developed it or not demonstrated that they have that muscle yet good so i think we're done there that was very good i feel very good your about heart that. is not that small you're not the <laughs> grinch it, it's it's not that small but let Giannis stay in milwaukee let the good let a small market win a championship if he oh, does Lord. that if he wins one in milwaukee oh, Lord. it would mean more than going any oh, place else go, you and go, winning three. oh give me a break on this small market didn't spurs dominated the league for 15 years yeah, yeah. and is is uh, does anybody question the heartfelt love for tim duncan does anybody like john manu ginobili tim duncan there's no there's no dispute about them they have a place in not just San Antonio hearts in every basketball oh, fan's they're heart boring. because of the way they did it. Oh, so boring. I listen. I don't, I'm not going to like cities less because they have more tall buildings. I, I, I I'm, I'm for. I got nothing against small markets, but I get it. You know. You know where? By the way, you want to know where Kevin Durant was this weekend? In my little, yeah. in Manhattan Beach. Why? Yeah. Because a big city with a bunch of stuff to do. Yeah. And 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 because he's American. Well, I don't know. Maybe I think Americans have big hearts. I don't know. I think it's a it's a big heart country. I think we're we being tested right now. That's for sure. <laughs> yes, we are. Ah, Rick Buker. Thanks, buddy.